Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, this is a talking head video, but I've got a couple videos that I'm working on really hard that are coming out soon that I'm excited about. So I've got to get back to those, but there's definitely some big news that I had to discuss. And don't forget that tomorrow AMD is launching their Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs. I will say that they're probably going to have an okay amount of stock, but at the same time, it could easily get out of stock, maybe even really, really fast. So I would definitely make sure to be there. It's likely going to go live tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time, though I'm not 100% sure. I would just try to get there as quickly as you can. And of course, if you are interested, I do have affiliate links to those in the description below. Anyway, I do have a ton of news to go over, starting with AMD reaching new CPU market share heights. The RTX 3060 Ti is already on sale. The 3080 Ti has just as many cores as the 3090. Eight gigabytes of VRAM isn't enough, and AMD talks RX 6000 ray tracing support. So starting things off, like I said, AMD has reached new heights in the CPU market share, actually as high as 2007, or at least since 2007. And as we can see here, this was done by Mercury Research, who shared the results, and it's pretty wild. Let's go down here, look at this graph by Tom's Hardware. We can see uh, it's broken up by mobile, desktop, server, client, and overall x86 market share. And you can see that mobile has absolutely skyrocketed, likely thanks to the 4,000 APUs. Then whenever we move to client, you can see that's going up significantly. Same with desktop, it's absolutely gone up in market share quite a bit. And I will say that server is actually moving up as well. Though of course, AMD basically didn't have any market share since Epic. So they're starting from practically nothing. And as you can see, they have moved up significantly. According to this, AMD's overall x86 CPU share was 22.4%, which is an increase of 4.1 share points quarter over quarter and 6.3 share points year over year. This is really big market share grabs here. Obviously, AMD is still far behind Intel, but as you can see, they're gaining ground. And for every point that AMD gets, Intel loses. So this is really big stuff. AMD is clearly doing great in the market. Next up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti, which they obviously haven't even announced yet, has apparently gone on sale in Saudi Arabia. You can see right here, a user actually got the 3060 Ti, and we can look right here, it's on uh, Silicon Valley's website. You can see it listed, although I will say that I've visited the page since, and they have taken it down, but obviously not before some people purchased it. What's wild is that they were actually selling it for what is effectively a thousand US dollars. So whoever purchased this definitely didn't get a good deal, but of course they were able to get it before anyone else, that's for sure. And we can actually see right here, they ended up sharing proof of it because some people didn't believe it. You can pretty clearly see that they actually have it on store shelves. And uh, like I said, that user actually ended up purchasing one, though they are selling it for ridiculous prices, clearly breaching the NDA. And next up for today, we have the RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. Now, I will say that this is interesting because as we can see right here, and I went over this a little while back, Copite 7 Kimmy, who I will say has been very accurate in the past, not long ago went over the specs for what we at least believe was the 3080 Ti. You can see it has 9,984 FP32 cores. So that is pretty odd, especially since now he's claiming specifically, they did not state specifically 3080 Ti before, but now they are, now he is specifically stating it, though I will say say that it has a bit of a different identifier. We have a GA102-250-KD-A1, while before it was 250-A1. Here's what I'm thinking. NVIDIA had no idea AMD was going to just completely blow everything out of the water. So the way I see it, they're likely scrounging up everything that they can just to come back with something that can be competitive. And of course, I personally believe this is it. Now, you can see it does have 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X, as well as the same FP32 cores as the 3090. You can see 10,496 FP32 cores. Now, the issue here, it does have a bit less VRAM versus the 3090, but 
it's almost guaranteed that this is going to be hundreds of dollars less than the 3090. So really all I can say is this is almost certainly going to suck for anyone who already purchased the 3090. Yes, it does have less VRAM, which is obviously how they're going to save a little bit of money. But at the same time, it's likely going to have very similar performance and everything but maybe 8K. It apparently also comes with the same memory speed and TGP as the 3080, but no NVLink. Basically, it really looks exactly like what I was saying. This is Nvidia's knee-jerk reaction to AMD's RX 6000 series. You can certainly tell that they were not expecting this from AMD. I mean, I will say basically no one was except for those who watched the leaks because those were really accurate. Anyway, it's definitely going to be interesting moving forward. And speaking of... Next, we also, it looks like Copite 7 Kimmy also shared the details of the upcoming RTX 3060 non-TI model and 3050 TI. You can see it supposedly comes with 3840 FP32 compute uh, cores and the RTX 3050 TI comes with 3584 cores. As he said, he doesn't know if it'll change in the future. I will say that I do believe this is in reference to the fact that this essentially changed very quickly, though once again, it's almost certainly because of the RX 6000 series. I can just about guarantee Nvidia is making tons of changes as we speak. Anyway, we next have a really interesting story. This actually comes from Godfall, the upcoming game called Godfall, which the Counterplay Games CEO, Keith Lee, actually stated. Now I will say right off the bat, they stated this, but clearly Godfall is a partner with AMD. Um, this actually came from a video from AMD. You can see that he states though that um, ultra textures will require 12 gigabytes of VRAM on PC to run 4K ultra settings. That's, that's massive. I will say that when Nvidia first announced the RTX 3080 and 3070, a lot of people were concerned that such high-end cards had such little VRAM, with the 3080 having 10 gigabytes and the 3070 having 8. Of course, Nvidia assured us that was plenty, and up until now, that more or less is true. But of course, a new generation of consoles is coming out, and even those have quite a bit of RAM. So it's definitely looking a bit concerning, though at the same time, once again, these were effectively made for the 6000 cards, but I'm sure that AMD didn't force Godfall to use all of this. They just built it for these cards and said, hey, there's a ton of VRAM here. We can do a lot of really cool stuff. So you may, may see that moving forward, but at the same time, they would obviously be hurting a lot of NVIDIA and even past AMD users. Of course, the 6000 series come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Of course, you could argue that this is ultra textures with ultra settings. So of course there are lower settings that uh, NVIDIA users could use. Whether we'll see it a lot in the future is obviously up in the air. They could just do it that way. We're the best of the best. You have to have more VRAM. But of course we shall see, but for NVIDIA, users, this definitely is a bit concerning. And lastly for today, we have a pretty big story from Adored TV, who apparently reached out to AMD for clarification on their ray tracing support on their upcoming RX 6000 cards. And what they sent back is this. AMD will support all ray tracing titles using industry-based standards, including the Microsoft DXR API and the upcoming Vulkan ray tracing API. Games making use of proprietary ray tracing APIs and extensions will not be supported. As they mentioned down here, titles like Wolfenstein Youngblood, Quake 2 RTX, and I'll actually throw in likely Minecraft RTX because that was definitely built with a lot of NVIDIA stuff. They were really hyping that up. Those will not be supported because they use proprietary API extensions. But with that said, it definitely shows that a ton of other titles will. Anything that uses the standard Microsoft DXR API, of course, and Vulkan Ray Tracing API, though that's going to likely be used quite a bit less, but with the fact that it does support the Microsoft DXR API, so of course a lot of games are going to be supported, and I would argue most games in the future will be, simply because the consoles are obviously AMD, so those definitely won't be using proprietary APIs from Nvidia, and I highly doubt most devs, or really much of any devs, are going to do it unless they're heavily paid by NVIDIA. So yeah, I do apologize that this is a talking head video. I know that I rambled a good bit, but there's some exciting news coming out and I should have some really interesting videos coming soon. 
Either way, let me know what you think about the news today down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.